Next we're going to look at is the properties of real numbers. Uh, properties of real numbers, they're going to be about five, I think, that we're going to look at. The commutative property is the first one. When I see the word commutative, what I think of is I think of the word uh, commute, okay, where you, you're at home, you commute to work, you go to work, and then you come back. Or you can even think communicate. To communicate, one person talks, the other receives the message, the other person talks back. So that's kind of what the property I use for, uh, the concept I use for the commutative property. There are two types. There's commutative property of addition, and there's commutative property of multiplication. And what it means is basically uh, you go one way and then you kind of go the other. So the commutative property of addition, I'll use one as a numerical example. So 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1, and then I'll use 1 as an algebraic. So A times B is equal to B times A. So those are the examples of the commutative property. Next, talking about the associative property, again we have two types, associative property of addition and also the pro associative property of multiplication. When I think of the word associative, I think of who you, uh, I think of the word associate. So that's basically the group of people that you hang out with or the people that you associate with, and that helps me remember the associative property deals with grouping. So one thing you need to know, again I'll show you two different signs, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. So if you notice, the order is going to be exactly the same when you're dealing with the associative property uh, as compared to the community property where the order changes on either side. The one thing that will change is with the commutative property, you're going to group two different things together. So 1 plus 2 and then add 3 to it is the same thing as 1 and then 2 plus 3 added together. Uh, this can also exist in, of course, the multiplicative property. So we could say um, A times B and then times C would be equal to A times B times C. So just an algebraic and a numerical uh, example there for the associative property. So two things to remember. Uh, associative property will definitely have a grouping symbol. Uh, commutative property, the order on either side changes between your letters or numbers, where in the associative property it stays the same. Next, we'll look at identity. Identity is basically this concept. You know, if you think about a person, their identity is not going to change. It always remains the same. No matter what you do to it, if you walked into school the next day and we put you, say, uh, you're a girl and you, we put you in a suit and we put a hat on you and stuff like that, even though you may look different, uh, your identity is still going to remain the same. So there's additive identity and multiplicative. Fun little word to say there, multiplicative. But additive identity is like this. You start with some number and we're going to add something to it and we end up with the exact same thing that we started with. So the identity of that number stays the same. Where the multiplicative identity is this. You start with some number x, you multiply it by something, and then you're going to get what you started with. So now, as you can see, we're going to go back and fill in the numbers. Additive identity is basically you adding 0 to a number to get that same number. And multiplicative identity is just multiplying by 1 to get the exact same thing. The last thing we're going to talk about is the inverse, or the last of the multiple ones, is the inverse property. So you've got the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse. So the additive inverse kind of works like this. If you think about inverse operations, inverse operations are 5, say, a positive 5 and a negative 5 to give us 0. Okay. Well, the problem is, is your book doesn't write it like that. What it does, instead of saying 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, instead of subtracting, it adds the opposite. So the additive inverse, the way you'll see it written as a text, is 5 plus negative 5 will be equal to 0. With multiplication, what it'll do is it'll say x divided by x is equal to 1, but your book won't write it like that. The way you'll see it written in the textbook is you'll see it x, and instead of division by x, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And then you'll get an answer of 1. So that's an example of the uh, two different types of your inverse properties. And then the last property we're going to talk about is the distributive property, which you guys all know by heart right now. Uh, basically, the distributive property is what we use anytime we're multiplying polynomials together. You're going to take the uh, number of terms in the first polynomial, which in this case is 1, and multiply it by however many terms you have in the second property. So this, pro this polynomial only has one term, 
So we're going to multiply it times both of those. Uh, 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times positive 5 is a positive 10. So the distributor property kind of works a little bit like that. Now we're going to get into obviously polynomials with multiple terms, and you just need to make sure that you multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second, and then combine like terms after that.